idea of the model, uh, there's much more homogeneous matching than cross-matching, uh, and the model shows that the more skilled sea workers who were previously linked with workers, uh, uh, dealer workers in the less developed countries, now shift to linking with the, uh, with the uh, uh, more skilled workers in developed countries. I have a couple of thoughts and questions. Um, I'm rather old, and so, uh, so when I think of uh, um, income distribution in developing countries, I, I tend to think of a guy called Kuznets, who most of you won't have heard of, uh, and then I think of a guy called uh, Arthur Lewis, and even models by people like uh, Faye and Rannis, and, uh, 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 and, and they predicted that income distribution would indeed worsen in the early stages of economic development. Uh, in a, it doesn't matter whether that's a closed economy or an open economy, uh, the basic model uh, uh, predicted that as uh, uh, globalisation takes place, uh, workers in, in, in the traditional sector uh, 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 who have very low levels of productivity and very elastic supply of labour uh, 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 experience uh, more intensive work, but the wages do not go, go, go up very much. So you have an unlimited supply or a relatively elastic supply of labour. Uh, I've always found that a, a fairly compelling explanation for why income distribution would worsen in the early stages of economic development. A very elastic supply of un, un, unskilled labour. Um, now the model Professor Muskett uh, puts forward is, is a very different one. Um, so I, I'd be interested as, as to whether uh, you might think, say, the level D workers that, that Lewis talked about, or, or these other people talked about, uh, 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 whether they, uh, uh, whether, whether the elasticity of supply of these workers is relevant to this, this discussion. You don't talk about that in the model. I, I wonder whether you might talk a little bit about it. I was going to say a little bit about the the supply of skills in middle income countries and particularly in Latin America has always puzzled me as to why uh, there hasn't been greater accumulation of skills in, in those countries. Um, and I, I, I won't make those points, but uh, I think that's, given the policy implications, I think over 20 or 30 years we've, uh, uh, there have been all sorts of efforts to, to raise the skill levels of, of, of workers in, in Latin American countries, and as I understand it, income distribution has not improved very much. Oh, on the sort of uh, testing or, or application of the model, um, I, I ha had a question as to how, ha how we study these problems in, in, uh, empirically, um, the problems of cross-matching and, and homogeneous matching. Uh, I think it requires pairing data on skills, on industry and firm characteristics, and, and also linking it to broader processes of global engagement. And I wonder if Professor Muskin might say something about that. I also had a question that was, uh, was passed on to me from one of the committee, uh, and that is, uh, uh, how might uh, uh, Professor Muskin uh, provide in insights from his theory of mechanism design, uh, which of course you all know, he was awarded the uh, Nobel Prize, uh, and meeting uh, individual rationality and incentive compatibility constraints, how would you apply that for policies of reducing inequality? How do you apply uh, your, your basic ideas there? Finally, just two, two, two questions on Indonesia. Uh, it was mentioned by Professor Muskin that uh, uh, inequality has risen in Indonesia. That's true, but not much, actually. I mean, the remarkable thing about Indonesia is how stable income, income distribution has been for about 30 years. Uh, uh, certainly since the Sahato period, the Gini ratio has been about 32, 33, 34. Even if you look at wage distributions, uh, there hasn't been a lot of movement. But that, it is true, as Professor Muskin said, they have been on the rise most recently. That is from about 0.34 to about 0.38, that's the Gini ratio, which is still very low, partly the way the data are collected. Uh, but uh, uh, so, um, I guess uh, uh, the question is why have they been on the rise? Well, Indonesia has really been somewhat delinked from the global economy, people would say, I think. So perhaps it's not so much to do with uh, homogeneous uh, 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 matching.
statue or, or the lack of it, uh, but rather uh, the emergence of the middle class that are now heavily engaged in a range of service activities, relatively high wage, uh, and, and perhaps also the very rapid expansion of the uh, resource-based industries uh, uh, in, in basically, basically in links with, with China, uh, uh, the, the demand from China, coal, uh, palm oil and products like that. Um, and finally, uh, an, another point uh, on Indonesia which I found puzzling and I think most analysts still don't quite understand, and that is that there are still stubbornly quite high skill premia even though uh, the uh, level of schooling has risen very substantially in recent years. I think the, the number, the, the number, the absolute number of second, higher secondary, upper secondary educated and tertiary people has increased, ha, has almost doubled in the last five years or so. And yet the skill premiums still go up. Uh, so, you know, some of the questions are, well, is it, is it, uh, why, what, 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 what's going on in the labour market? And uh, maybe uh, Professor Mustin has some thoughts about that. So these are a few thoughts. Uh, it's a very interesting and challenging set of ideas that Professor Muskin has presented. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.